In the 1990s, Playtime Co. released their new toy line titled The Smiling Critters. They were small, brightly colored plushies that consisted of a variety of different animals. The crew even had their own television show, mimicking the 90s style cartoons, showcasing their individual personalities. In Chapter 3, there are two of these characters that stand out the most, Catnap and Dog Day. Catnap is the main villain of the chapter, while Dog Day contributes to the lore of the story by painting a full picture of what happened to the smiling critters. So in this video, we're going to discuss Dog Day and his importance to the plot in chapter 3. Dog Day is known to be the optimistic friend of the smiling critters. He's heroic, strong, and determined to achieve his goals and lead his friends to victory, as well as offering words of encouragement when needed. Okay, guys, I promise. All winds blow away. Eventually. He has three different designs his cartoon persona, ruined critter persona, and his bigger body, two of which deviates completely from his intended personality. Starting with his cartoon persona, Dog Day is seen as a little orange dog with a sun necklace. His ears, hands, and feet are a darker shade of orange, showcasing a color palette that is bound for kids to love. His cardboard cutout in the game depicts him in an excited state, stretching his arms and legs out wide. The next Dog Day model that we're introduced to is his ruined plush. During the playhouse section of the game, we're being chased by a bunch of these things. This withered model depicts a torn Dog Day plush who's covered in dirt. One eye is torn out of its socket and two ears appear to have been bitten or torn at by another creature. The next variation of Dog Day, and the most iconic, is his bigger body. When first introduced to him, he's in the jail section of the playhouse with his wrists chained to the wall. His entire lower body is also gone and Dog Day explains how he succumbed to his terrible fate. Prototype is his god, and this is what he does to heretics. These little toys follow Catnap to avoid that very fate. Dog Day's unfortunate demise would also be foreshadowed in the cartoon. At the end of the mini episode, when all the critters have gone to sleep, Dog Day is seen on the couch with his arms splayed out in a similar position. His legs are also covered by his blanket, indicating that they would soon be gone. There's two theories where his legs could have gone afterward. The first one is that Cadnap took his legs as a peace offering for the prototype. We know that the prototype liked to use pieces of toys to build himself up. Perhaps the legs of Dog Day were a perfect addition. Catnap could have used his legs as a part of his shrine that he's seen worshipping in the caverns. The second theory is that Catnap simply used his legs as food to feast upon, either for himself or for the ruined critters. Also, how did Dog Day stay alive? He somehow been able to sustain himself without feasting on flesh for an extended amount of time, so this also makes him stand out. It's worth wondering why Catnap decided to not kill Dog Day in the first place. Perhaps Catnap did this so that he could target Dog Day specifically by prolonging his suffering. In fact, we have no reason to believe that Catnap was ever friends with the Smiling Critters, as he had idolized the prototype even before he turned into a bigger body. I also spoke about this in my Catnap Explained video. So if you want more info on the origins of Cadnap, the link to that video will be in the description. But to briefly explain, Cadnap used to be a boy by the name of Theodore Grambo, and the prototype manipulated and molded him to be his servant. So once Theo turned into Cadnap, he used his newfound power and strength 
to carry out the will of the prototype. It makes sense to believe that the rest of the smiling critters were on Dog Day's side because he alludes to the fact that they were all defeated in some way due to catnap. And it's possible that Dog Day was actually the leader of the smiling critters, at least when it came to protecting them against the prototype. Notice how in the cartoon, the sleepover takes place at Dog Day's house. The color matches his palette, and there's a picture of a bone above the door. The inside of his house is also filled with bone decor, from the clock, to the welcome mat, to a framed picture on his wall. So we can assume that this is Dog Day's residence. This means that the critters could have come to Dog Day for support in times of need. Also, the fact that they're all in his house except for Catnap hinted the fact that Dog Day helped the critters hide from him. They knew that Catnap would kill them because they were against the prototype. But somehow, Catnap ended up finding and killing them, all except for Dog Day, who knew he was the ringleader and simultaneously his biggest enemy. So he simply decided to torture Dog Day for an extended amount of time. Dog Day was supposed to be the hero, but ended up getting captured and arranged in a similar position to a crucifixion. He was supposed to be the hero that saved everyone, but still ended up getting caught. It's also important to note that Dog Day refers to himself as the last of the smiling critters. Despite Catnap still being alive, this just further proves that although Catnap was technically a part of the smiling critters in terms of branding, he was never friends with them and often isolated himself to fulfill the duties as a servant of the prototype. Dog Day also refers to Catnap as that thing, intentionally separating himself from him. But unfortunately, it seemed like Catnap could easily overtake Dog Day simply because he's much bigger than him. We've seen Catnap's gigantic frame linger around in the shadows, and during his boss battle, we can see his true size. Although Dog Day is literally cut in half, we can tell from his proportions that he's rather small and probably closer to the size of a tall adult man. Catnap also uses his weapon of mass destruction, the red smoke, and it doesn't seem like Dog Day has any outstanding abilities. It's sad to think about Dog Day's original persona versus the one that we met in the playhouse. He was supposed to represent this determined character full of hope, but he's been beaten down so badly to the point where he had to rely on someone else to finish the job, and that's us, whom he calls Poppy's Angel. He turned into a more mature, realistic version of himself who had to come to terms with the harsh reality of the hour of joy and the prototype. Soon after his Oscar-worthy monologue, he's overtaken by the ruined critters and forced to chase after us. He's even so kind as to give us a warning to run away because he knows what's gonna happen and he won't be able to control himself. Oh no! Oh no! Leave me! And if you want a more in-depth theory on how the Smiling Critters possess Dog Day, the link for that video will also be in the description. But after going through this chase scene, we finally escape and jump onto a lift after the door abruptly closes in front of Dog Day, and it's very likely that he's still alive. Earlier in the game, we escaped Miss Delight by leaving through a similar method, except the door literally closes on top of her and crushes her. With Dog Day, however, the door just closed in front of him. Plus, the ruined critters are still inside of his body, keeping him alive. It's possible that this is all a part of Catnap's plan. The torture that he wanted Dog Day to go through wasn't just about chaining him up and chopping off his bottom half, but keeping him alive to drill into his mind that he has failed to protect his friends and will continue to live in absolute agony as he slowly loses his mind. Part of that is being taken over by ruined critters and not having any control of his 
his body. He's essentially just trapped inside a hollow shell of himself, which is nothing short of a nightmare. But maybe Dog Day was hoping that we could potentially end all of the torment. He knew about us prior to meeting him, and he's convinced that we're some sort of savior. You, your poppy's angel, come to save us, is what Dog Day said to our character as soon as he saw us. Which means that Poppy has been doing some PR work while we were separated. It's fair to assume that there are more toys on Poppy's side since she states we've all seen how capable you are, referring to the fact that there's more toys who know about us, so there must be some sort of communication system throughout the factory. It could be related to the telephone system, which Ollie would have a lot to do with. He can also access security cameras, so it isn't too far-fetched to assume that there's some sort of PA system going on. But of course, Dog Day is chained to the wall, so he wouldn't be able to pick up a phone. Also, spreading messages through a loudspeaker can be compromising if the wrong person hears it, so I'm led to believe that Dog Day heard about us through word of mouth. There's a gap between when we lose Poppy in the train crash in Chapter 2 and when we meet again after leaving Home Sweet Home in Chapter 3. In between this gap, Poppy could have found and befriended Kissy Missy, contacted Ollie, and the two of them could have spoken to other toys that are on her side. From there, the gossip would have spread like wildfire. Also, since Dog Day used to be a leader of some sort, it wouldn't be too far-fetched to assume that news would get to him first, as sort of a VIP recipient. Hopefully in Chapter 4, Dog Day will come back, preferably not possessed, and we could help him find a new body. From there, we could learn more about the smiling critters and what happened to them. He's just such a cool character with limited screen time. His whole entire character arc is really tragic, and he honestly deserves better. It really makes you wonder what Dog Day actually looked like before all of this chaos. Did he walk on two legs or on all fours? Perhaps both, since we've seen Catnap walk on four legs, but also demonstrates his bipedalism. But what do you think about Dog Day? Let me know down in the comments. Thanks for watching, subscribe, and click on this video right here.